The Tale of Genji is written by Murasaki Shikibu about 1,000 years ago. It has 54 chapters and over 1,000 pages of text in its English translation. It is generally considered to be the world's first true novel and was certainly the first psychological novel ever written. The Tale of Genji deals with the life of a prince and his seemingly endless affairs with various court ladies. The novel depicts a refined Japanese court life during the Heian period. The tale begins as the emperor falls for Kiritsubo. She then gives birth to a child who is immediately marked as exceptional in every way. However, Kiritsubo is harassed by other ladies because of jealousy. One of the most remarkable among the ladies who have been mistreating her is Lady Kokiden, who is the emperor's chief wife and a Fujiwara with powerful connections. Such a situation forced Kiritsubo to withdraw from court. She then dies at home in the humid heat of summer. A Korean fortune teller who is introduced to the boy pronounces that Although he has the mark of emperorhood upon him and will rise to high office, he will not become a minister in any ordinary sense of the word. Eventually, the emperor decides that since the boy has no backing but his own, it will be wiser to give him the surname Genji to cut him off from the imperial succession and save him from the hatred of the Kokiden faction. Meanwhile, the emperor who is devastated with grief after losing his love is then introduced to Fujitsubo who turns out to be more than satisfactory substitute. Genji who misses his mother heard that Fujitsubo is almost her double and became irresistibly drawn to her. When Genji reaches 12 and undergoes the coming of age ceremony, he is no longer allowed to freely access Fujitsubo's apartment. Instead, he is married off to the 16-year-old daughter of the Minister of the Left. Fujitsubo then became the unattainable object of his desires. On the other hand, Genji's new wife, Awai, quite naturally sees him as still a child and proves to be somewhat overbearing and unsympathetic. Genji finds himself spending most of his time at the palace in his mother's old apartment and as a result alienates Awe's father, the minister of the left, although Awe's brother, Tono Chujo, the secretary captain, does become his best friend and rival. Genji, now 18, goes into the hills north of Kyoto to seek a cure for a persistent illness at the hands of a holy man. While staying there, he met a little girl living in the country mansion of a bishop further down the mountain. She reminds him very forcibly of Fujitsubo. He decides that he has found what he has been looking for and eventually manages to take her away into his own household. Fujitsubo makes one slip and allows Genji to consummate his love for her. She will become pregnant and he will never be allowed to come so close to her again. Genji becomes more and more estranged from Aoi and captivated by his little find Murasaki. Fujitsubo, on the other hand, gives birth to a son, but somehow they both manage to hide the terrible secret from everyone else. The new prince is, of course, a further threat to Kokiden and her son, and she in turn begins to plan an attack on Fujitsubo. Restricted from close contact with Fujitsubo, Genji allows himself to become passionately involved with one of Kokiden's younger sisters, Oboro Zukiyo, who has been promised to the crown prince. Moving on, when Genji is 22 or 3, his father who is the emperor retires and Kokiden's son succeeds as emperor, taking the name Suzaku. On the other hand, Awoye finally becomes pregnant and gives birth to a boy, Yugiri. 
However, she dies later on after being possessed by a malignant spirit. After Aoi's funeral, Genji returns to his mansion at Nijo and makes love to the young Murasaki for the first time. Subsequently, Genji made a decision to formalize the arrangement by marrying her but privately. Matters continue to get worse for Genji when his father dies and power shifts into the hands of the Minister of the Right, Kokiden's father. Fujitsubo finds herself somewhat unwillingly tied to Genji because he represents the best hope for her son's future. But when Genji tries to see her again, she decides she must seek refuge from him by taking orders. Out in the political wilderness, Genji comforts himself with artistic works and continues his dangerous affair with Oboro Sukiyo. But one day, they are discovered being together by the Minister of the Right, and Koki then determines to get rid of Genji herself once and for all. Apparently driven into a corner, Genji decides it would be best to banish himself from the capital for the meantime. Saying farewell to all his women and leaving Murasaki in charge of his affairs and estate, he lives for Suma on the coast in an indefinite period of exile. Life at Suma is lonely, but this is only to be expected because Genji is in fact submitting himself to a form of ritual purification. The name Suma is rich in connotations both of exile and cleansing, and it will be richer now that Genji has stayed there. His presence was heard by the former governor of Akashi, now a lay priest, living somewhat further along the shore. This gentleman becomes convinced that the gods of Sumiyoshi, an important shrine situated as Suma, have answered his prayers for a noble son-in-law, so he intends to ask Genji to visit. Forced to live at Suma all winter, Genji experiences a terrifying spring storm that threatens to destroy him and his retinue. As the storm subsides, Genji dreams of his father and realizes that he should leave soon. A party from Akashi then arrive in boats, as if by a miracle, and Genji interprets this as a divine sign. He travels across to Akashi, where he is destined to accept the priest's offer to marry his daughter, the Akashi Lady. The girl who will come from this union is going to be an empress. Meanwhile in the capital, the Suzaku Emperor has been suffering from an eye complaint apparently contracted after dreaming about Genji's father. His grandfather, the Minister of the Right, then retires. The Suzaku Emperor decides that he himself wishes to retire as well, and so he asks Genji to go back to the capital to look after the new Reizei Emperor, who is unknown to him, Genji's son with Fujitsubo. Restored to the center, Genji prospers, builds an East Lodge for his women at his Nijo mansion, and continues to rise to great heights. On the other hand, Fujitsubo came back into prominence for a moment to help arrange the matching of her son, the Reizei Emperor, with the girl Akiko Nomu who has been entrusted to Genji's care by her mother Lady Rokujo who has a jealous temperament. Genji wins a picture contest. The sympathetic reaction to his own drawings of life in exile is so strong that it ensures he will have his way and that Akiko Nomu will be the next first consort. Genji then brings the Akashi lady and her daughter to the capital. The lady herself prefers to stay on the margins at the western edge of the capital at Oi. She is eventually forced to turn over her daughter into the hands of Murasaki. Murasaki, being childless, is only too willing to bring up this surrogate daughter. 
As a sign that Genji has reached maturity and can now fend for himself, his father-in-law died and then followed by Fujitsubo. At this point, the secret of his own birth is first revealed to the young Reizei Emperor by a priest who had previously looked after Fujitsubo. The secret remains a secret to the world at large, so its revelation sets up a new series of psychological pressures for both Genji and his son. It does not take Genji long to realize that the new emperor knows something of his true origin. The problems of fatherhood begins to weigh heavily on Genji. On the other hand, Yugiri, his son with Awayi, is growing up and is subjected to close supervision, made to study hard, and prevented from indulging in the kind of pursuit that characterized his father's youth. Akikonomu formally becomes empress and Genji begins to think of retirement. He builds a new mansion to accommodate his women on the land he inherited from Lady Rokujo, designing there a pleasure garden over which he can rule in almost imperial splendor. Genji approaches his mid-thirties. This seems must be the right age to accomplish all the things, but Murasaki Shikibu develops psychological complexity and sophistication, similar to Yugo, who died in mysterious circumstances. Yugo had daughter Totono Yuho named Tamakazura, who returns from exile in Kyushu. Tamakazura is searching for her mother Tuhatsu says south of the capital, a temple they used to pray. She met there Yugo's old maid named Ukon, who is Genji's servant. Then suddenly Genji hears about the Makazura that aroused his interest. She is invited to the capital and eventually ensconced in the Rokuho mansion where Genji is soon contemplating a certain reliance. In the mansion, there are seasons in the garden, and women are identified to each season with their rivals. The Makazura is uncomfortable to his suitors as well as to Genji's action towards her, but she is a confident woman to handle these kind of situations. She is using her experiences in reading romances and discussion of virtues of fiction that gives Tonoyuho's son Kashiwagi to have interest in her that may be the reason to reveal her true identity. Genji is a marriage broker that leads him to know about Kashiwagi's feelings to Tamakazura because of the handwriting in his letter. The entry of Tamakazuras into the garden has already slightly upset the equilibrium. It shows that Genji is no longer in full control in the garden. The storm allows Yuhiri to catch a glimpse to Genji's women, particularly to Murasaki, and seeing Genji and Temakazura in somewhat comprising situation that can cause loss of authority to the next generation. The damage is repaired and Genji arranges for Temakazura's coming of age, finally taking Tonoyuho's into confidence despite of Temakazura's undecided plan to her suitors or the aspect of serving the emperor in the court. She decides based on Forsake Higokero, uncle of the crown prince who's been successful to his rivals. Akashi daughter goes to court. Yuhiri managed to marry Tonoyuho's daughter, Kuminari, that unites the two families. Murasaki meets Akashi lady for the first time and recognizes her qualities that justifies Genji's continuing care and affection to this rival. Genji is approaching his 48th year was honored by giving emoluments due to a retired emperor and visits by the former emperor Zuzaku and Reizel, but because of the disturbance of Typhoon, it might not happen. The garden was originally from Lady Rokuho, given to Genji as offering an appeasement from the former owner. Akikonomu, daughter of Lady Rokuho, must be the central figure of the garden, but because of Tamakazura's 
presence, she was almost displaced in the role. The whole mansion is glorifying Genji rather than Lady Rokuho. Genji was known as the creator of humankind, which he has control to anything, even the time. The mansion will serve as his pride, which indicates of his successful master. The placing of the woman in the mansion is strategic and highly significant, which represent of their view of nature in special terms. Spring and autumn are considered as the most important season. Morozaki and Akashi's daughter place in spring for Genji's future. Tamakazura shares with the Lady of the Orange Blossoms the summer for contradiction to love. Akashi Lady in winter as her role of endurer of humiliation out in cold. And lastly, Akikonomu occupied autumn as it means of her name and as a representative of her mother. Tamakazura promises to become mistress of Genji but turned out into middle-aged Vio. She escapes from the danger but turned out in worse situations in the capital. She is used by Murozaki for her appearance as the long-lost daughter of Genji. Her role is to educate Genji who was interested in her sexual potential. Tonoyuo's dream of saving Genji to his failing political fortune came true, but not as expected because of lacking of characteristic of Tamagazura. Higokero fell in love to Tamagazura, who manages to obtain her resulting of madness of his first wife, who decided to come back to her parents. Similar to what Murozaki witnessed the marriage arrangement of Genji. His powers weaken. Yuhiri sees his failing of powers. The coming of the Taipun is the occasion for barriers to be broken down in the garden. Fences blown over and curtains waft aside at crucial moments. Up to now, Genji has managed to keep Yuhiri out of the way at his studies. But after the storm, he actually sends Yuhiri to do rounds in the mansion. It also enables Yuhiri to sow Murasaki that lightens him about his father's power and deception. It looks nothing sacred for Genji. As Yuhiri sees these women, he categorizes them in his own mind in terms of flowers and trees. Murasaki is for him the wild cherry, the Makazura as a Yamabuki or Keriya, and his sister the Akashi daughter, Mysteria. Yuhiri's identification of these women with flowers is undoubtedly linked to their ultimate unavailability, and it is for him a way of materializing their potent sexuality. One day, Genji visits the Makazuras during summer rains. He finds her reading romances and attempt to seduce the Makazura which reflect of him as art deceiver. He mimics a scene from the tale of eyes and copy it in reality. For Tamazakura, it is interesting, but to Genji, those sex reads are the reason for them to be deceived, then suddenly changes his tone favoring to Tamazakura's thought to click his bait, to seduce her by inserting himself as the hero for her just like in the story. The fascinating shadow that began to creep over Genji's world after the moment the Suzaku, retired emperor, managed to persuade Genji to marry his third daughter, the third princess. Murasaki was convinced by the new lady that she will be finally replaced in Genji's affection. She succumbs to jealous, the one emotion that up until now she can't manage to control successfully. Although Murasaki can never be supplanted in his affection that she herself cannot be sure. One day, Kashiwagi, son of Tonochujo, visited the Rokuju mansion to see Yujiri when suddenly someone catches his attention. The third princess threw blinds which have been disturbed by a lady in waiting in pursuit of a wayward cat. He is instantly obsessed with the princess and goes to extreme length to satisfy his craving. 
securing for himself the cat concern and keeping it as a substitute on which to lavish his affection. Four years pass by, the rising emperor retires. Suzaku-san becomes emperor and Higuro Tamakazura's husband is put in a command of the government. Then, Murasaki falls seriously ill and Genji moves her to the mansion of Nijo, away from whatever danger that Rokujo have. Her illness means that Genji is absent from the garden. Kashiwagi taking advantage of the absence of Genji to manage his surprise for the third princess and spend the rest of the night with her. Fearless and named princess allowed Genji to know what had happened. He saw a note from Kashiwagi that was left somewhere. He immediately noticed the handwriting because it seemed to be familiar and it was a letter from Tamakazura. Genji assumed that by their departure, they would be able to avoid any trouble. But from what he saw and discovered, he did not think that he would feel jealous. Kashiwagi was so afraid of Genji thinking that he discovered what happened and wishes himself to die. The third princess gives birth to his son Kaoru. After Kaoru's birthday, his mother is so shocked at the result of her own carelessness that she decides to take vows without delay. In her father, his hopes for her happiness thoroughly dash is forced to emerge from his mountain retreat to administer the necessary rites. Yajiri comes to the fore. Kashiwagi asks him to look after his wife, the second princess. Yajiri begins to show more than mere friendly interest. Murasaki falls ill again and expresses a desire to take her vows. Still, Genji refuses to let her go, unable himself to accept the inevitable. She therefore decides to arrange the secretion of the thousand copies of the Lotus Sutra, a holy book that considered to be the most important because it embodied the teaching of Buddha. Murasaki is starting to prepare for her death on the coming days and hope for the rebirth in paradise. Genji felt sad and has nothing else to live for. Only his grandson, Yiwu, and his daughter, Akashi. He is already 52 years old and waiting for one more year to experience the same. His retirement in retreat. Suzaku, the emperor, pressured Genji to accept the third princess. But even though how much he explained his reason, it doesn't matter. The girl is the daughter of Fujitsubo's younger sister and therefore has the potential to be yet another substitute to Murasaki. Lady Rokujo causes great pain on Murasaki that causes Genji to stay away from the third princess. Genji realizes that he is so hasty and his judgment proves faulty. He also realizes that she is still the granddaughter of the Kokiden. Kashiwagi dies through shame and fear of Genji's knowledge of his deception. He really kills himself because he knows he cannot deal with the consequences of his own desire. The mother of the second princess gives Yujiri a flute that should belong to Kashiwagi. Kashiwagi comes to Yujiri in a dream and tells him that the flute is not for him but for another male in the family. When Genji comes to hear of the gift and the dream, he realizes Kashiwagi's intent. The flute should be destined for Kaoru. He refuses to allow Murasaki to take vows. He ensures that he will experience the full impact of her death. He does is to deny Murasaki the ability to express herself. The taking of vows, the cutting of her hairs was such a potent image of sexuality in a woman. Was a path to a kind of knowledge that Genji want her to have. The next chapter begins with the unexpected news that Genji has died and that no one can replace him. Although later on, he is replaced at the center of the story by two figures, Kaoru, his reported son, but really the son of Kashiwagi and the third princess, and Prince Niyu, his grandson. The two might seem to represent another Genji and To no Chuho pair at first sight. But that is not the case since neither Kaoru nor Niyu can match Genji. Besides, the world have changed as the setting shifts away from the capital to a small village to the south Yuji, with a melancholic and gloomy connotation. This transition occurs when Karu, who has always been religious, travels to Yuji to see a retired prince, who is renowned for his religious knowledge. 
The prince happens to be away but Caro discovers his two daughters. However, there is more that pulled him to Yuji. The old servant who has some of Kashiwagi's papers, wherein Karu finally finds out his true origin and his father's anguish. It turns out that the old prince thinks of Karu as the perfect man to entrust his daughters to. On the other hand, Karu confides his discoveries to Niyu, who in turn immediately introduces himself to the elderly prince. Unable to persuade Kaoru to make a firm decision about his daughters, the old prince who is aware of his imminent death warns them that they might be isolated at Yuji for the rest of their lives. As a result, the elder sister Oigimi decides to reject all suitors to turn down Kaoru's advances if ever he confessed to her. Oigimi tries hard to redirect Kaoru onto her younger sister Naka no Kimi to the point that she manages to slip out and leave Naka no Kimi to her fate when Kaoru came to visit. Surprisingly, Kaoru and Naka no Kimi only ended up having a frustrating conversation throughout the night. Kaoru thinks that Oigimi will give in if he can marry off Naka no Kimi to Niyu. Niyu becomes fully involved with Naka no Kimi and actually marries her. However, it was difficult for him to continue to visit her. As a result, both sisters feel ill, used, and discarded by both Karu and Niyu. Oigimi then feels ill because of self-induced pressure and complex emotions. Karu visits and took care of her but she eventually dies in the same manner as Kashiwagi. On the other hand, Niyu comes to visit, but Naka no Kimi, who is angry after being left alone for so long, turned him away. He then decides to transfer her to his home in the capital. While staying in the capital, Naka no Kimi became closer to Kaoru, who in turn starts to see her with uncanny resemblance to Aigimi. Later on, she feels alienated in the capital and persuades him to take her back to Yuji. Being misled by her request and perceived resemblance, Karu became obsessed to Naka no Kimi. Repeating her elder sister's strategy, Naka no Kimi tells Karu about a half-sister Yukiko, whom she knows looks even more like Oigimi. While staying at Yuji to transform the house into a temple, Karu comes across Yukiko, who is returning from a pilgrimage to Hesedera. Her resemblance to Aigimi strikes him immediately. Yukifun's mother tried to marry her off and when this fails, she allows her to stay with Naka no Kimi in the capital, wherein she met Niyu. Karu then sends her off to Yuji. Niyu hears her whereabouts, impersonates Karu and manages to sleep with her first. Yukifun is drawn to Kaoru but fascinated by Niyu, who in turn becomes obsessed by her. Torn between the two, she becomes distraught and decided to end it all by drowning herself in the Yuji River. Both men are shocked to find that Yukifun has disappeared and Kaoru starts to desperately seek for a substitute wherever he can. Afterwards, Yuki Fun is miraculously discovered by the Yokawa bishop lying beside a tree near the river. She eventually gains consciousness but her memory is damaged. Kaoru then heard of her survival and starts to bother her with visits and letters. She will undoubtedly continue to deny him. As the story ends, Kaoru is still pondering how he is going to have her for himself.